We're at the symphony. We're at Heinz Hall in Seung Jin Cho's dressing room. And it's so great to have you back in Pittsburgh for Ravel this time. Seung Jin, welcome. Thank you. You said the rehearsal went well today. Yeah, the orchestra was great as usual, so I really enjoyed it. You've played this piece a long time. You started to play it when you were very young. What's the special pleasure and delight for you? What do you love about it? Um, Ravel Concerto in G is one of my favorite concertos because first of all, it's fun to play with the orchestra and, um, and because of its lonely and very delicate second movement. And yeah, it, it is always great, a joy for me to play this concerto. Most challenging technical moment for it. It really whizzes along at the end, I know that. Yeah, especially the, the last movement. Uh, it is technically demanding, but yeah, but the music itself, um, it is so wonderful. So I don't think about the technique when I play this concerto. Yeah. And some great moments for the winds. It's really a, a smaller orchestra and uh, uh, what we have clarinets shrieking and uh, wonderful effects that he came up with and the jazzy elements. There's some Basque folk music in it too. Right, it is so jazzy, especially the first and the last movement. And of course, Ravel was influenced by like Spanish or Basque folk music, and you can clearly hear these um, elements in this music. Did you hear much jazz when you were growing up? You didn't have any time to be listening to anything other than uh, Beethoven and Brahms. <laughs> Um, well, I love listening to, to jazz music, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't play jazz. Yeah. Yeah. It is totally different kind of music. So, yeah, but someday I'll love to explore more. Well, it's all kind of fun to think of Ravel and Gershwin going to jazz clubs in New York City and enjoying it, loving it. And then here it is in, in the Ravel concerto in G. You've had a huge, huge couple of weeks. You played Carnegie Hall with a solo recital just a few days ago, and I heard it was spectacular. Was it stressful? Was it crazy? Was it fun? Oh, of course it was stressful. <laughs> Every time I, I played there, I'm always nervous, but um, the hall itself has a, such a great energy, and of course it's a wonderful place to be, so I really enjoyed it. You played some Handel from your new CD on Deutsche Grammophon. We don't get enough Handel. You play it so beautifully. And then Brahms with his love of Handel, too. Right. Um, Handel's music is not so often played on modern piano. And during the pandemic, I discovered the, the suites by Handel um, through a recording um, of Richter. And um, I decided to play this music because I found it very, uh, very beautiful and interesting as well. Many people play Bach, but not so much of Handel. So, and playing with Brahms' Handel versions, I thought it, it would make sense because Brahms was also inspired by Handel. So, yeah, that's why I decided to record this program. And you played a little Handel encore that. Wilhelm Kempf arranged, if I remember correctly. It's on the CD. Right, right. It's, it is short and beautiful music, yeah. And we all love the harmonious blacksmith. It's one of the great tunes of the keyboard literature that people know. Yeah, the harmony chain is there, wonderful, and um, it is very melancholic and lyrical, so it is perfect piece for an encore, I think. Eight CDs on Deutsche Grammophon now. Bravo! Oh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. <laughs> recognize that. <laughs> oh, it's already, yeah. What's in the pipeline? What are you going to record next? Do you have a plan? Uh, yeah, but I cannot tell you right now. No, but <laughs> it's still a secret. <laughs> it is a still secret, but I think it will be released in 2025. It's a long project. So, yeah. And Deutsche Grammophon has a new way of getting music out there. I think it's called Stage. Have, have you, are, you're part of it, are, are you not, where they're using some filmed concerts? Um, I think they're doing some kind of like video streaming. And um, yeah, I, I also did several times. Um, and I think it is very good for everyone, for the audience in the world, because 
uh, not everyone can uh, go to the concert hall, so I think that this, this is a very good project. Yeah. It's nice also uh, that Apple Music is doing something with classical music. You've all been, always been able to get iTunes has classical music, but now they have a streaming service specifically for classical music, which I guess is, I haven't looked at it carefully, but I understand it's better organized so that you can find what you want. Have you had a chance to check it out yet? I've heard, but <laughs> I have. You never have any time. <laughs> I have, but <laughs> um, yeah, I will explore more about it. <laughs> oh, and Carnegie Hall, didn't you also during the pandemic have a debut with the Vienna Philharmonic at the last possible moment? Right, it was February 2022. And it was a memorable experience for me because I had to replace um, the Russian pianist and I had to, to play Rachmaninoff's second concerto which I haven't played for like uh, more than two years and I practiced like crazy and um, yeah the moment I finished the concert I was so relieved and, and yeah but I was really stressed and nervous. I can imagine. You were in Berlin. You got the call, what, midnight, something like that? It was late? It was, um, I think it was in the evening in Berlin, and I was at home, and I was supposed to have dinner with my manager, and it was canceled because my manager back then got COVID. So, <laughs> so, so I was at home, and I got a message from my American manager saying that, oh, can you come to New York tomorrow to play with the Vienna Philharmonic? And so I said, are you serious? <laughs> so seven hours later, you were in New York City, and Yannick Neze Seguin was your conductor, and he uh, was working at the Met, if I remember, at the same time, and uh, couldn't rehearse until late in the afternoon, early evening, just a little bit before the, the concert. Wow. Right, I remember that he was also very busy on that day, and um, and he also had to rehearse the symphony by Rachmaninoff, which is quite long. And I had, I think, eighteen minutes of rehearsal. So, yeah, it was a good experience, but um, I I hope not. I hope it's not going to happen again. <laughs> They'll have you back for more concerts with the orchestra, I'm sure. That, that's for certain. And obviously the recital went well with just you on the stage. I forgot to ask you when we met last time about your years in Paris. Did you hear the Ravel? Did you play the Ravel at all when you were at the Paris Conservatory early on, right? Didn't you work with a French pianist there, Michel Beroff? Right. I studied with Michel Beroff, and um, I have so many um, stories with this concerto um, so I made the debut with the Seoul Philharmonic with this concerto with Myung Chang in 2009. And I, I also made the debut with the Concert Gebel Orchestra and Berlin Philharmonic with this concerto. So uh, for me, this is a very special concerto. So, and I also work with Michel Barov, um, not only this concerto, but also like a lot of French music like Debussy and Ravel. So this kind of music is very familiar to me. I'm so glad that it's happening in Pittsburgh that you're playing it once again. Anything new at home? Berlin is still home? Uh, you're right. What's going on in the city of Berlin? It's one of the music capitals of the world. People say it's the most exciting city I in the world with all of its new horizons since the, the uh, East and West got together. I'm not often in Berlin because I travel you're quite, on the road. quite often, but Whenever I, I'm in Berlin, I try to go to the concert, and so many things are happening there. And yeah, it is true that it is the capital of classical music these days. There are so many great orchestras, and there are so many great artists coming. So um, I think Berlin is a really ideal city to live for the musicians. How often do you get back home to Seoul and Korea? I think I think twice a year or three times a year, but to perform, not <laughs> to have fun. You have a huge fan base there. They love you in Korea and now in the music world at large, everywhere. When you were here last, people came from Washington D.C. to hear you play and wanted to get your autograph and, and meet you. Yeah, I'm really grateful about everything, about their support and. 
yes, I'm, what can I say more? I'm really grateful. And what about Korea? What's happening with music there? The, the music life is very intense in, in Seoul. So during the pandemic, there was no lockdown in Korea, like like in America or in Europe. So I was able to go there and perform the recitals. Um, actually, I had to quarantine for two weeks, but it was no problem for me because I have family there and um, place to stay there. So, um, and I think the classical music is a big thing in Korea. Whenever I performed there, I can I could see so many young people in the audience. So, yeah, it is very it is always great to be there. Do you ever think North and South will get together? I'm probably not going to see it in my lifetime, but maybe you will in yours. But it's a very difficult situation. <laughs> we hope it's, it's very controversial, but um, yeah, everyone hopes. I think. Yeah. yeah. Of course, it's hard to imagine today Lauren Mazel taking the New York Philharmonic to North Korea. And you had worked with Lauren, did you not? Right, um, 2013, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we hope that the world is getting better in spite of a war in Ukraine and uh, all of the terrible things that happen. Uh, we listen to the news every, every day, and thank God we have Ravel and uh, great orchestras and the music that is in your fingertips. Please keep sharing it. Uh, any new repertoire that you're working on? Um, I'm working on um, some Mozart concerto, um, 414 and 271, and I'm planning to, to learn many solo repertoires, including probably some Beethoven or Brahms. So yeah, I'm so fortunate. I mean, the pianist, we are so fortunate because there's so much repertoire, so it's endless. Sean Jin, such a joy to speak with you. It's a great pleasure.